This is our uh, family and friends uh, Bible study. Uh, I hope uh, my my prayer, my my hope is is that uh, that this is a message that not only resonates with you all, uh, but it's a message that is stirring you up. It's a message that is uh, causing you to examine yourself, uh, to go before the Father and ask uh, how he sees you. And not only how he sees you, um, but that you're excited about what he tells you. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, you are a person of great wealth. You are a person of great value. And you are literally an answer uh, to a problem. Uh, one of the things we know about God is God is not wasteful. And so God would not put you here if you were not necessary. And so if you are one who questions uh, your value, know that God would not have placed you here uh, if there was no need for your contribution. And so that in and of itself should make you see yourself a little bit more differently if, you, if you're if you one given to seeing yourself uh, poorly. If you see yourself uh, in a negative light, uh, I want to tell you that God thought so much of you uh, that he only made one of you and, and he felt it necessary to put you here in this earth in the time that he did. Uh, one of the things that uh, I hope that you all have been considering is, is that uh, literally when a word goes forward, the power to change your life is literally being presented to you. Uh, however, you know, if you look at it as merely uh, just some words from the Bible, uh, then you run the risk of missing out on something that could shift your life uh, and your situation instantly. You're, the, the world that we live in was literally created with words. And so my question to you is, cannot a word change your world? If the world that we live in was created with, with words, God said, and, and so it was. If, if he put the world into operation with words, cannot a word change your world? And so I, I, I hope that uh, on these Tuesday nights when you come on here, uh, you're coming on here with that level of expectation uh, that you're going to get a word that's going to change your world. Uh, the word of knowledge, the words that God has been, been sharing with us uh, over these past few months, uh, I want you to consider this, that a word from God is an announcement of an expectation. Uh, so God has been announcing to us what? Uh, the need for us to see ourselves differently to see ourselves as what as sons you know not only children but sons of god and and, and I, I hope that i've clarified that on a number of occasions that this word son is not uh relegated to gender but it really speaks to maturity and so uh what i mean what's the difference between a child and a son well I, i'm a 41 year old man you know i have my own family uh, so I'm not my parents' child, but I will always be my parents' son. And so once again, that speaks to maturity. Sonship is a call to maturity. Uh, spiritual maturity, I need you to get this, is not determined by age, but it is determined by obedience. And so it's through our obedience that we get developed. And through our development, we get trusted with the more. And so being trusted with the more is learning how to govern yourself through application. And so uh, if you didn't catch it, I'm already in the message because I was feeling it from worship, but I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. Uh, I want to uh, highlight uh, scripture of text, and then uh, we're going to proceed in tonight's message. And so if you have your Bible, um, turn with me to Romans 8. Uh, and, uh, I've been telling y'all this is probably this. This has been the the chapter. Uh, this has been the 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 book and the chapter that the Lord has really been dealing with me uh, pretty much all this year. You know, uh, uh, you know there there have been times when God really highlights uh, particular chapters uh, in the Bible uh, for certain seasons of my life. And I can tell you that Romans 8 has been just that for me this year. 
And so Romans 8, I'm going to pick up at verse 12. Uh, I'm going to read to verse 17, and then we're going to uh, go a little further in what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, Romans 8, starting at verse 12, and it says, Therefore, brethren, uh, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now I'm going to I'm gonna read that verse one more time because I want you to highlight this uh, particular vo- verse if you're taking notes. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage against a fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children. So let me say that one more more time. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And so uh, we've been talking along the lines of application for the past few weeks. Uh, we talked about the role of faith, right? And, and what we, we endeavored to hit was that faith is the currency of heaven. Literally, that is the means in, uh, of transaction. You know, we, we all go to the store. We all understand what the accepted means of transaction is. Here in the U.S., it's the dollar system. Uh, and so we, we give money in exchange for a good. Well, in heaven, faith is the currency uh, that we use to make our transactions. We talked about this last week that Uh, There's also a language associated with heaven, and that is the language of love. Uh, What did Jesus tell his disciples? He said that uh, they'll know you're my disciples uh, by the way you love one another. And and, and I've seen the conversation continue forward from our, our, our Tuesday Bible study, and it really blessed me. But one of the things we have to understand is that love uh, in this regards is not always a feeling. We don't always feel like loving or we don't always feel lovingly. But the reality is that love is still a choice. Even when the circumstance and the situation makes it hard to love and to have the feeling of love, we can still choose to love. And so love is the language of heaven. And what we're going to talk about tonight is the spirit is the identification of heaven. Okay, so I was going to call it uh, the the confirmation or the complexion of heaven. Uh, I might hit on that a little bit, but uh, for those who are taking notes, tonight we're talking about the spirit is the identification of heaven. And so I want you all to consider this. Every citizen has some type of documentation that solidifies their citizenship. Uh, When you're born, what do we get? We, We get a birth certificate, right? That is a identification of your birth, and that document alone verifies the country that you belong to, the country in which you were born in. Uh, at some point in time, we'll, we'll get, we get driver's license, you know, that, that validates us within that state. You know, it, it, it's the, the seal that confirms our ability to drive and, and to do whatever it is that we need to do with that identification. And so uh, along the same lines, the spirit is the identification uh, of heaven. And so the reason why I'm talking along these lines, uh, particularly with these topics in this fashion, is because we have been trusted with a lot. And and I need y'all to understand that. If, 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 If you want you know, just to, you know, say, hey, you know, being a believer, uh, that's too much responsibility. Well, hey, listen, the reality is, is that we serve a God who tells us to take up a cross, uh, meaning that we're to follow, literally, we're to follow his example. And we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. But the reality is, is that there has to be a clarion call to maturity. Many of us are comfortable with being children. 
And here's the thing about a child. You know, I, I believe everybody on this phone call has, has kids of their own. And, and they remember when they were babies. Uh, a baby, you know, the parent had to always run and, and, and address every need. But the reality was is that the, the baby didn't get to experience the full benefits that belong to them. Uh, I was laughing uh, with my wife about this the other day. My oldest son, uh, that joker will eat you out of house and home. But uh, I remember when he was a when he was an infant, uh, we would feed him like the the little stewed uh, bananas, and and he would always have this funny face because you know me and my wife be eating like steak and something something real real good. He could tell that there was something different about what we were eating in comparison to what he was eating but he was not of the age where he can handle it and, and spiritually many of us could find ourselves pigeonholed to a place of immaturity and not able to handle the things that god wants for us to handle and so the reality is is god is calling us to a place of maturity and here's the assignment that we all have we're to advance the kingdom of god but the reality is, is that it's hard to advance the kingdom if you don't know how to use what you've been given. And so we've all been given these tools. We've all been given these resources, but they have no value to you if you do not know how to put them in operation. I was just talking to a brother uh, a few minutes before uh, our call tonight, and, and we were talking along the lines of faith. And literally, we can find ourselves in a, in a position where we are discounting what we're praying for because we don't believe that we can receive it. And what I was telling him is that in those moments, the prayer should be, God, help my unbelief. Because I don't want to go through the motions of not believing a thing and then find myself being disappointed that the thing I didn't believe was going to happen didn't happen. And I hope that that makes sense. So long story short, once again, the spirit, uh, and, and I don't want to limit uh, the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit uh, is the most important person on, on earth, you know, uh, but the, the Holy Spirit, he's our identification. He's our seal, uh, as I was mentioning earlier. Uh, and so I want to put before you a few definitions because I am going to cover, come from the line of complexion and uh, in confirmation. Uh, now we all know with complexion, uh, complexion is, is off, it deals with your skin, right? But it doesn't only deal with the skin, you know, uh, here's, here's the definition of, uh, another definition of complexion. Your complexion is the appearance, uh, the aspect character It's the viewpoint attitude or conviction. And this is important because the word is telling us how we are to live. We are to, uh, for as many of us are led by the spirit, those are the sons of God. And so this speaks to an attitude or a conviction. Once again, that's the belief, all right? Uh, the other thing that I said was the Holy Spirit is a confirmation of your citizenship. He is the identification of heaven and so confirmation is uh to establish the truth and the validity of a thing it is a seal and so the holy spirit is our seal of of sonship now why is this important uh because we all aspire to be good good sons and daughters right uh, i'm a good son in the natural to my parents because I care about what matters to my parents. I want to honor their sacrifices and I want to bring respect to the family name. The same thing applies spiritually. Uh, I'm concerned about the things that matter to God. I want to honor the sacrifice that Jesus made and I want to be a good representation of the father. And the way that we do this is to be led once again by the spirit of God. And so when I insist that y'all carve out time to, to get before God and, and to pray and, and to hear his heart, it's, it's for a, a myriad of reasons. One, we have to develop a confidence that God speaks to us because God is speaking. The confidence is knowing how he speaks to you. 
So knowing that he hears you, but here's the other thing. When he starts to talk to you about what he's called you to do, now you have confidence that God is considered, one, he's already considered all of the excuses that you feel will eliminate you from being able to do it. He's already factored that in, but he's still telling you these things, not only that he wants to do through you, but he's telling you how he feels about you, right? And so as he's speaking to you, we develop that confidence. And so here's the thing. I, I, I grew up uh, in my parents' house. I, I know the spirit of my parents. And so if a situation came up, I could ask myself, okay, what would my parents do in this situation? And because I've spent enough time with them, uh, there's a very high chance that I would do the same thing that they would do. And on a practical level, it's the same thing when we spend time with God. We're getting his heart. And so we're being led by the spirit and we know what to do in, in the, any given situation. Uh, if y'all recall, uh, there was the big craze a couple of years ago uh, where people, you know, I would see them at the gas stations and stuff, but uh, though there was those WWJD bracelets, those what would Jesus do bracelets. And, you know, the question that they begged to answer was, you know, what would Jesus do in this situation? Well, my question to you is, especially as it relates to practicality, is if, G if you know Jesus would do something particular in that situation, then insert yourself there and say, okay, this is what I should do. And it's the same thing, you know, once again, we're talking about being led by the Spirit. And so uh, this verse, it brings up something very interesting. It says that we did not receive uh, the spirit of bondage against a fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Uh, let, me, let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, okay, yeah, so my, 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 my question to you all is, if we did not receive the spirit of bondage against a fear, then why do we why do we so many of us live in a place of fear and i believe the reason is is that we are choosing to not be connected with our personhood or the identification of heaven which is holy spirit because the reality is is that we talked about this before if you really consider that the god of creation has your back if god be for us who can be against us? Literally, if God is for you, then why do we view certain situations the way that we view them? And it's because we're choosing to identify with our old nature rather than the nature of God. And literally, the God, God who created heaven and earth, the world that we live in, he has given us his spirit. And so the question is, once again, because now we're talking about application. We spent uh, five, six months talking about rediscovering the lost you. And so it's, it's my hope that by now you understand that we, we have the spirit of God in us. We have, we are, uh, we talked about this before, uh, we are gods. Uh, we are not Jehovah. We are not Yahweh. But we are gods because the word says that uh, God stands in the congregation of the almighty, you know, and he's talking to God. So who are, who are the people that he's talking to? He's talking to us. And so we have to once again start seeing ourselves. We have to see ourselves as God sees us. Because the reality is, is that as we see ourselves as God sees us, uh, we understand that God has placed a standard on us. And I see that, Dr. Tim. Thank you, sir. Uh, living below our God class. And so many of us are guilty of living below our God class. Poverty is not your portion. Uh, sickness and disease is not your portion. And, and how can I say that? Because I read what the word says. The word, as it relates to those who are in a covenant relationship with God, there are promises and there are benefits associated with that relationship. Not only are there promises and their benefits, but there's also a degree of responsibility given to us all. 
And once again, sonship speaks to maturity. And so the, the, the million dollar question that I got to ask us all uh, as we're cl- coming to an end, because like I said, we tried to do this 30 minutes, but the million dollar question that I got to ask you is, do you desire to operate in your flesh nature more than you do in your God nature? Because it's easy. It's easy to just say, this is how I am. This is how it's going to be. And, you know, uh, nobody in my family ever ever had it. And so I guess it ain't meant to be. It, that That's a very easy because what it does is it takes the burden of responsibility off of you. But when I come to a place and say that God has made me in his image and likeness, he has given me the assignment of dominion. And now I have to ask myself, what am I doing with my assignment? See, now that, that's a different conversation. And that's a conversation that will not be satisfied until you get before the face of God. Before you have that heart to heart with God and say, okay, God, you got to make this clear for me. What am I here for? I don't want to keep going through the motions. I don't, I, you know, I don't like my situation, you know, something has to change. And so my, my appeal to you all is, is that we get to this point where we are not only settled in the reality of our identity in Christ, but now we are literally intentionally knowing what it is to advance his kingdom. And that's the whole purpose of what we're going to be talking about as it relates to application. We, we know the means if, if you can see this on a natural, on a natural principle, if it, if it makes sense to you naturally, I promise you, it'll make sense to you spiritually. We know, once again, that money is the means of exchange here in our country or in the world. The, the U.S. dollar is our means of exchange if we want to do business. So spiritually, faith, God has told me this, I believe it despite what I see, uh, I believe it, and I'm putting steps into place to obtain what it is he showed me. And I, and, and after, the word says, after I've done all I can do, you know, when it talks about uh, when Paul was talking about putting on the whole armor, it says stand. So literally, I'm standing in a position where I'm holding on to my faith. Because once again, our fight is the fight of faith. And so faith is the currency. Of, of heaven. This is how we're going to advance the, the, the kingdom of God. Secondly, there's a language that belongs to us. We don't, we're not to be responding how the world responds to stuff. Because when you start to respond like the world, we can't identify you. We don't know you. Because at the end of the day, you should, have, you should be the one with the solution. You should be the one who's able to speak and give people an understanding about their current situation. But once again, if you're not operating in love, it's going to be difficult for you to attract the people who need what you have. And so that was the language part. And then the last part of what we're talking about today is the spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is our identification. Once again, he's the one who helps us shift from our old nature to our new nature. And I'll say this, uh, and then I'll open up for for comments and questions. A couple of weeks ago, I was going through a a difficult time. People were asking me, hey, how are you doing? Uh, Is everything okay? And and I told them, hey, I'm I'm, I'm actually good. You know, my, my spirit man felt good. But but physically, I was tired. You know, mentally, I was a little tired as well, uh, frustrated and stuff like that. And 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 uh, I had a brother reminded me, and in my time of prayer, uh, I had to remind myself again that this we should be processing stuff spirit, soul, flesh. When we get out of order, we start to find ourselves uh, susceptible to how the world does things. And so everything around me was telling me that I should be acting chaotic. But my spirit was telling me that you got this. God God is for you. I'm in you. We're good. 
And so as I started to let my spirit man minister to my whole man, I found the peace and, and, and I was good because I, I settled in the fact that what God has said, uh, it was good to go. And so it's my hope that we all get to that point where the first lens in which we process things is not our flesh, it's not our soul, but it's our spirit. And as we're led by the spirit, you will literally start to create the world that God wants for you to create here on earth. You will literally begin to advance the kingdom that he's called us all to advance. And so I hope that that makes sense. Uh, but, but my admonishment will always be to get in the face of God, to develop a confidence in his voice, to develop a, a trust in the reality that he speaks to you. And that as he gives you instructions, as you start to see the results of that thing, he's developing uh, a, a cachet with you. Uh, in essence, these become the monuments of when God demonstrated and showed himself strong on your behalf, literally propelling you from faith to faith. <laughs>